You are listening to the Slow Living Podcast, and I'm your host, Stephanie O'Day. What if I told you that you could truly have the life of your dreams, the life you've always wanted, one filled with abundance, joy, and a sense of purpose? It's absolutely possible, and I see it each and every day with my coaching clients. It all starts with learning how to slow down. You deserve to live the life you've always dreamt about. Let's get started. Hello, hello, Slow Down Society. Steph here, and welcome to episode number 94 of the Slow Living Podcast. Today, we are going to revisit consistency and kind of the power of consistency. And in episode 84, we had talked about kind of the secret sauce and the formula of putting everything together is your mindset plus your action plan, and then consistency. And I've gotten a few emails about it and some questions, and it's come up in the last few weeks in my one-on-one coaching. And I just want to kind of talk about what that looks like and how to be sustainable with your consistency. Because that's really the name of the game. So when you are in kind of a tough season of life, you do sometimes need to kind of not hustle. I hate, I hate the word hustle, (laughs) Um, but maybe push a little harder. So I kind of think of when, let's think about it, when you're driving a car and all of a sudden there is a hill up ahead or some sort of obstacle, you do need to push down on the gas pedal a little harder in order to make it up the hill. And then once you reach the top and it kind of levels off, you can let go a bit, kind of release the gas pedal a little and coast for a while. And that feels good. That feels sustainable. That feels like, huh, I could just kind of drive this road forever and ever and ever. And that's what I really want you to try and focus on and try and lean into and see what you can do on a day-to-day basis, that feels good in your body, that feels sustainable, that feels like, I've got this, like I bring it on, I can keep doing what I'm doing for the kind of like unspecified like length of time. So I think what happens, and, and talk to me, tell me what this kind of brings up for you. So, um, When we make goals for ourselves, we put this kind of pressure that if I don't achieve whatever it is by a certain time that I failed and it, it just sort of feels defeating and it feels like you can never get where you want to go. And so you're in this sort of stop, start, stop, start. Stop, start. And again, if, if you want to stick with the driving the car analogy, that's not fun. <laughs> That's a very jerky ride. So I, I have, um, I've got older teenagers. So actually, uh, my oldest is 21 now and, um, my middle one is 18. And then my youngest is not yet driving. She's only 13. But when you're first learning to drive, that's what you do. You, you, push <laughs> as hard as you can on, on that gas and you jerk awake and then you let up a little and, and it's very jerky and stop start. And that's not a comfortable way to be. And that's not the marker of a life well lived. And we're here to live a long, healthy, comfortable, sustainable life where you're still getting to where you want to go. You're still making forward momentum and and forward progress on all of your personal and professional goals, but you're doing so in a way that feels good in your body and not jerky and not graspy and not feeling like you're behind in any way. So I, I was looking through my sort of stack of journals. So I have written, and it's on Amazon, a 30 days to a new you journal, and it came out in 
2020, in the beginning of 2020. So um, I've now had a, a, a journal um, on a monthly basis for three years, three and a half years, because I'm recording this in July of 23. And so I started going back and reading some of my past journal entries from three years ago. And it just sort of warms my heart that all of this stuff, that that stuff, me, stuff of three years ago worried about, has sort of worked itself out. Like I, I just kept at it and I just kept kind of honing away of, of what the great big huge end goal is and how to get there. And um, when I first sit down with a coaching client, we're doing kind of the intake form. We talk about resolutions and goal setting. And then I give everyone a three-year worksheet of where do you want to see yourself in three years. And the reason I do that is because in general, a five-year plan seems kind of far away and, and, and just too much in the distance for most people to kind of wrap their brain around. And so they think, oh, I've got plenty of time to do this. And so they procrastinate because five years seems very far away to step in to the future you that you're trying to create. Um, and so then they try and cram everything into one year and they make a New Year's resolution or a year from now, my life is going to be completely different, uh, kind of grand gesture and, and sweeping uh, generalization of where they want to be in a year. And so I've just broken it down to three years. So if you meet or surpass all of your personal and professional goals in a year, go you. <laughs> that's amazing. And that's wonderful. But what we're trying to create and what I'm trying to create with my coaching clients is lasting change, like, like full on transformative change that feels good, that doesn't feel hustly, that doesn't feel graspy, that doesn't feel like you're constantly pushing the gas pedal as hard as you can to get up this great big huge hill. No, we want to we want to chug along at, at a sustainable pace, at a pace that feels good. So when you stop and take a breath and look back, where have I been? What, what have I done in these past three years, these past five years? You feel proud of yourself because you haven't like burned any bridges along the way. You haven't gone deep into debt in any way. You haven't... Um, destroyed relationships or your health. So, so when you go back to the very, very basics and you're building out your peace pyramid, the very first block is time management. And, and I got to tell you, if you spend <laughs> any time listening to my podcast or, or any time reading through my books, time management is where it's at. And if you can get a handle of your time and not feel like that kind of overwhelming, there's too much to do and not enough time to do it, frantic feeling, then you have won. You're, you're doing it. I want you to do all of the things that you have to do in any given day and still have margin, still have room in the wings to do the things that you want to do, the stuff that makes life worth living. The last episode we had talked about celebrating your wins. If you're not scheduling in enjoyment, smiles, laughter, bubble baths on a whim, a nap when your body wants it, um, time to just kind of walk around the block and, and just be in awe and wonderment that, that you're alive, that you get to live today. That, that is what we're trying to do here. And that is the marker of a life well lived and what slow living is all about. So I was going through um, the journal writing that I had uh, pointed out to you earlier in that 30 days to a new year journal. So I keep a stack of them on the counter behind my desk. And every once in a while, if I'm feeling, I don't know, 
a little bummed, a little defeated, a little kind of like I'm not getting to where it is. I want to go fast enough. It's really validating to go back and and read that writing and see where I was. And we are um, right now, we're in the summer of 2023, and some of my coaching clients are starting to get worried and nervous about this upcoming school year. And um, in many people, if you've got school-aged children, you sort of look at the beginning of a school year as a new year. So uh, online, sometimes it's called the mom's new year, or or you make back-to-school resolutions. And I know on my website, I've written about back-to-school resolutions before, and I'll pull up those articles and link it in the podcast notes. But I was thinking, so, so where was I? five years ago for uh, back-to-school resolutions. Well, five years ago, I am honestly going to let you know that I was not in the best place. So that was the school year of 2018 to 2019. And I know that I felt floundery. I felt behind. I felt a little frantic. Like I wasn't meeting all of my goals and all of my wants and needs in a sustainable way. And I I just didn't feel good. I didn't feel good in my body. I didn't feel good in my skin. I wasn't sleeping correctly. I wasn't eating properly. Um, The crockpot site was kind of dying this slow sort of fizzly out death. Um, Speaking of death, my, my grandma had passed away in uh, December of 2017, and I was working on the aftermath of that. I was helping my mom clear out grandma's house and the storage unit and, and sort of doing all of these things and going through the motions, but I wasn't in a great place. I, I knew <laughs> that what I was doing wasn't sustainable. Um, I couldn't keep breathing life and breathing fire into the crockpot site because my heart wasn't there. My soul wasn't there. I, I didn't enjoy it the same way I used to. And it just really didn't feel well in my body. And because of that, the site wasn't profitable. It wasn't um, giving our family the income that it needed. So in that school year, the school year of 2018 to 2019, I decided that I wasn't going to try and hustle to bring the Crock-Pot site back to life, but instead I was just going to let it kind of hang out and do its thing and I would get a job, uh, a real job, (laughs) and, and go back to work. And that was hard for me. It, it sort of felt like I had failed. Um, I was super fortunate and lucky that I had gotten to be home for 12 years and be with my babies while they were little and write and and speak and and teach about crockpotting and and write these books and, and do the things that I got to do. But it was time. It was time for a new chapter and to step into what I wanted to be, which wasn't the crockpot lady forever and ever. And so going back to work immediately filled the the income gap that I needed to fill. And it also filled a whole bunch of other things. It gave um, healthcare to me, which meant that the healthcare that my husband's company was paying for me wasn't necessary anymore. And so that money could be invested into retirement accounts. It also created sort of structure to my day, which fulfilled the the time management piece of the peace pyramid again. Because for that time, when I was mourning grandma's death and, and mourning the loss of the crockpot site and, and realizing that what I was doing didn't feel good, um, my time management had gotten kind of kind of out of whack. My health had gotten out of whack. I I was eating too much. Um, I was drowning uh, my my thoughts in probably too much wine each night. 
I wasn't sleeping well. And so it was time. It was time to kind of do a control alt delete factory reset and going back to work all of a sudden pushed me into, I've got no choice. Got to set the alarm and do all the things every day. And uh, now was packing my lunch. And so, so health and kind of reining in my caloric intake, um, was better. I started dabbling in intermittent fasting and looked into kind of healing my hormones and realizing that intermittent fasting uh, was crazy helpful in that. And so I started jotting down the outline for 246 eat and, and knew that kind of future stuff was going to do that. Um, what else? So, so in, in 2018 to 2019, um, the, the site, my, my businesses online were just coasting. And that school year was really about getting into the new normal and, and setting ourselves up for what I thought, um, was the right thing to do. And, and looking back on it, it absolutely was the right thing to do. Um, so then, uh, let's see. So that was 2018 to 2019. So 2019 to 2020, um, that school year, um, it, it was a great school year. I had immediately shifted about five to seven pounds because I started walking more, um, just working all day, standing, moving my body, paying attention to my health, um, getting the, the time management really in check. Right around that time is when I recommitted to getting up early and paying myself first and um, in doing that. And, and so that was a sustainable, consistent habit that I just decided on purpose that I was going to do, that um, it was just a tiny little baby step that I could commit to. And, and so that happened. And then in that year... So that 2019 to 2020 school year, uh, COVID happened. COVID happened in March of 2020. And all of a sudden, we needed to pivot everything. And I started working at home for a few weeks and sort of decided I've got this extra time. And I'm putting that in quotes of what I wanted to do. And so I outlined four ebooks that I wanted to write. And so that summer of 2020, I put those ebooks up on Amazon and up on my site for sale. And so that was just so gratifying. So since I was no longer worried about making money from my writing and making money from the sites because my day job was paying those bills and fulfilling that need, my creative juices started bubbling again. And so I was able to consistently write in a sustainable way where it didn't feel graspy and it didn't feel like I was behind. It was just fun and I was able to do that. And so think about that. Where can you do just tiny little baby steps um, to kind of alleviate some pressure from yourself so you don't feel like you're in this kind of first gear overdrive all the time, but you can just kind of coast along. In the next school year, I started working with a business coach and I started realizing that I wanted to really kind of lean into um, life coaching and success and mindset coaching. Again, I had, I had done it for a while when I first started the Peace Pyramid course and then sort of uh, cast it aside for a while. So I recommitted to that and, and I got a few more certifications for life coaching and, and brought on some clients and really enjoyed it. And again, it wasn't paying a ton and it didn't need to because I had the day job. So it was just fine. I could be creative. I could be helpful and, and didn't need to be pushy in any sort of sales. COVID was still a thing at the beginning of that school year and the kids were still off campus, which meant that even though I was going to work, I didn't have um, a whole bunch <laughs> that I needed to do. So I could do things 
um, for myself. And it, and it just felt really good and easy and, and not graspy. And that's where the sustainability comes in is, is making huge sweeping generalizations of from now on, I am never going to eat a carb ever again for the rest of my life. So, so think about that and, and think about if that's the kind of life you want to live where you're making huge general sweeping like declarations that don't feel like you really can keep up with it. But if you are just taking little baby steps forward, you will get there when you get there and you just kind of throw away the timeline. I had recorded um, episode number 54, which are which it was about smart goals being stupid. And one of the best ways that you can stick to a, a sustainable and consistent schedule and is to get rid of the timeline and just whatever it is, is going to take as long as it takes. Many of the women that I work with are in the process of decluttering or downsizing. So maybe their kids are off to college and they're moving from a larger house to a smaller house. And so they're in this decluttering kind of phase and it's, it's just a matter of, of continuously doing the thing um, kind of on autopilot where you're no longer thinking about it and you're like, nope, this is just what I do right now at 10 a.m. I declutter for an hour. Um, so, so think about where you can incorporate that in your everyday life. Um, in the 21 to 22 school year, that's when I decided that um, I was ready to have a podcast. So that school year in, in the fall, this podcast, the Slow Living Podcast was launched and it didn't feel graspy. It didn't feel like I was shoving something into an already overflowing day. I had already figured out how I could record in a way that didn't disrupt my family didn't disrupt my school schedule in a way that still felt good that I was meeting my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients' needs in a way that that I still was kind of feeding, nurturing, and watering the different websites, but I could add this other component where I was reaching people from all over the world and helping in a way that felt good to me, in a way that felt consistent and stable. So if you had asked three to five years ago, hey, Steph, how are you going to have a podcast and release books and coach and work and keep the house up and get a dog and all of these things? I sort of would have laughed. But because everything has come bit by bit, step by step, it hasn't felt overwhelming. It hasn't felt like a burden. It just felt like the next logical step. So if you think about that, um, kind of take a deep breath and envision and write down where you want to be in five years and, and think about that. What does your time management look like in five years? In a perfect world, what does your day-to-day -day schedule look like? Where does your health look like? Um, what do you weigh? What do you look like? How many steps are you taking each day? Can you bend? <laughs> can you bend and touch your toes? Um, can you do a sumo squat and then stand right back up? Um, what's it like to walk up a hill? Did you feel good in your skin? What does your sleep look like? So, so really kind of take the time and journal all that out. And then bit by bit, step by step, in, in a way that feels good in your body, make an action plan and then stick with it. So, so uh, that sort of mindset, action step, and consistency. So in this kind of stable, consistent way. Um, I was thinking about that this morning in that the, the decision fatigue has sort of been alleviated from most of my day. I no longer think <laughs> anymore. I just sort of do this stuff. So kind of the, the alarm goes off in the morning 
and I kind of walk downstairs and, and Adam has already, thankfully, because he is just a gem of a man, um, started my coffee pot. And I have a four cup Mr. Coffee coffee pot. So he uses a Keurig and um, he, he sets up my coffee pot and then he goes out in the garage and takes a run. And he does all of that on autopilot. He no longer thinks. It's just muscle memory. He has just created this sort of pattern and, 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 and just daily routine where there's no decisioning happening anymore. It's just autopilot. The same way when you climb in the car and you drive to work, you're not thinking anymore of putting your seatbelt on and putting the car in reverse and driving and, and making sure you're looking over your shoulder to not hit the garbage cans. You do all of those things without really thinking them through anymore. You're on autopilot. So his routine is to set up my coffee pot and then go out in the garage and um, I think he listens to a podcast and goes on a run on a treadmill. So that's his routine. My routine is the alarm goes off. He gets out of bed. I get out of bed. I pull the sheets back to kind of air out the bed. I open the window to get some fresh air in. I use the restroom. I come downstairs. My coffee is brewing, thankfully, because he's, again, gem of a man. And I unload the dishwasher. That's the routine. That's my body on autopilot. That's the consistent, sustainable action that I do without thinking. There's no decisioning happening. If I didn't do that, the day would get away from me and kids would start waking up and the, the dishes wouldn't be empty. Somebody would have to think about it, that. Somebody would have to think, oh, I can't put my peanut butter knife in the sink right now. I've got to stop and empty the dishwasher. So on autopilot, I stumble down the stairs in a pretty much dark house and just spring to action. That's the action step and that's the consistent part. And the reason that happens is I decided on purpose. I decided on purpose in that sort of mindset component there that this was the best way to get my day started, to get the family started with while the coffee was brewing, I'm going to empty the dishwasher. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to do it. And I'm kind of uh, belaboring the point here, but I want you to really think about what you do on autopilot and how you can incorporate more things that are healthy and sustainable in your day that will help move you forward to all of your personal and professional goals. Because that's what we're doing here. So after the coffee, what do I do? I go and I sit on my yoga mat with my journaling paper and notebook and I just start writing and I fill in the prompts. Again, both the, the 30 Days to a New You workbook and the daily journaling worksheet are prompted. So it's not a brain dump. I absolutely brain dump in the margins, but... I don't have to think. It's already done for me. So I'm just going through muscle memory and, and doing the things. And by doing so, by, by just filling out the prompts, the back of my brain starts to percolate, probably because I'm drinking coffee at the same time, and the creative juices flow. So I know after that, after I do that, I sit down to my computer to send out an email. So the emails, again, I've already decided Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the crock pot list gets an email. Tuesday and Thursday, the slow down society gets an email. So if you're on my email lists, depending on which list you're on, you might get an awful lot of emails from me, or maybe you only get the crock pot emails, or maybe you only get the slow down society emails. But I am no longer thinking of, gee, stuff, what are you going to do today? Nope. Because it, it's been done and I'm just going through the motions. On Saturday, I don't send out any emails. Usually I record a podcast episode or I'm on the phone quite a bit with coaching clients. Um, many of my clients work during the week, so we catch up on the weekend. And it works out great for me. And then Sunday is uh, the Sunday slowdown where everybody gets kind of a recap of my week. And so... 
Think about what you can do in this way to help set yourself up, to help set future you up for sustainable success that feels good for you. All right. Let me know. Um, If this is helpful, I'm going to drop a few other episodes that might be of help to you, and I will put them in the show notes. So if you haven't figured out where all of the the podcast show notes are, um, they're not in the drop down um, in the uh, kind of app wherever you're listening to the podcast. Um, That is on the site. So if you go to stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast notes, all one word podcast notes, you will see every single episode listed and you can click on it and all of the podcast notes are there. Um, But to go back, if you haven't done so, episode number 52 is about the power of consistency. Consistency is the key. And that is what we're talking about again here today. 54, I mentioned earlier, which was smart goals are stupid. And that's really sort of giving yourself permission to take the T out of the SMART goal and the the timeline. And and also, I I don't actually like any part of SMART goals, the specific and the measurable and the action-oriented and the results-oriented and the timeline. None of that feels like making your dreams come true. That feels like some sort of sales quota from a business guy. So it's just not something that if you're trying to live a slow, steady, consistent, lovely, wonderful life filled with peace, (laughs) none of that sounds good. Um, Episode 56, Waiting to be Saved. So that's a great episode when it comes to being consistent and being sustainable because if you're waiting to be saved, You'll never do the things that you need to do on your own because you're waiting for an outside circumstance or an outside person or an outside event to do the work for you. And you've got to do the work. You've got to do the work. There's a quote that I've got on my bulletin board. um, And it says, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. And that really is what life is all about. You, you are in the driver's seat. You are in charge. You have to do the things to make the things happen. Um, Episode 60, four more years. So um, that's that's a powerful episode in that I share some insights that I have on my 46th birthday and how what I'm doing feels good and it feels sustainable. And so I absolutely can continue doing the things that I'm doing for another four more years. And that's such a gratifying place to be where you know that you're on the right track and you're just keep keep moving forward with the eye on the prize. And then the last episode I want to talk to you about is um, episode 72, which is about uh, deciphering data. And it is important to collect data and, and go back and pay attention to different milestone markers. And so that is why I like um, having this kind of stack of 30 Days to a New You journal where I can go back and see where I was. Where was I a year ago this month? Where was I a few years ago at this time? Because knowing where you were and knowing where you're going to go, there are data points along the way. So if you are trying to track calories or trying to lose weight, and never stepping on a scale, um, that's kind of tricky because it's sort of tricky um, to, to see if you're making forward progress. And when you're deciphering the data, it's a matter of looking at the data in a very neutral way. It, it's just a number. It's just a data point. And then you deciding how that makes you feel. Does that make you feel like you're on the right track? Or does that make you feel like maybe you've got to kind of buckle down and work a little harder there. So so that is a powerful episode um, to take a listen to. Okay. Um, at any time, please know that you can reach out to me. Um, we are going to gear up for this upcoming school year. And so let me know where you are and if you feel like you're on the right track. If you are ready for a mindset upgrade 
coaching call. I do a few of these every week at Stephanie O'Day forward slash mindset. Pop yourself on my calendar. I'm happy to have a free complimentary coaching call. You can see what coaching's like and what it's like to have support and someone in your corner kind of um, hugging you and nurturing you and cheering you along. Um, It's something that I love to do. And if the times that are in the calendar drop down don't work for you, reach out to me, email me. I'm sure we can work something out that's mutually beneficial to both of us. Okay, pretty people, consider yourself loved and hugged, and I will be back. Do you have a slow living story to share? Leave me a voicemail at stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast with any questions, comments, feedback, or testimonials, and I will be sure to include it in an upcoming episode. Also, if you found value in this episode, please share it with your family and friends and subscribe through your favorite podcast provider. The more you share, comment, and leave positive reviews, the more people we can reach and share the slow living lifestyle and messaging. Thank you, Slow Down Society, and have an absolutely wonderful day.